Hi, I'm Mark Cleborn. Welcome to the Photographer Academy. And today we're talking about art for art's sake. Uh, we're looking at landscape uh, in Photoshop. Um, the image on screen is uh, one that we were doing with my kind of weekly Photoshop school on the Academy. And uh, it kind of spawned off me to actually create some more kind of this type of image for my own use. And so I thought we'd kind of follow it through um, with a little bit of kind of development on how we can work with other images in a similar way. So um, this image pretty much is um, starts off with uh, a guy, uh, a dancer on the rocks with wings on, including my backpack here. Um, but then uh, we basically took it through the path, path blur, some bit of um, camera raw filter edits and a kind of a finish um, to kind of end up with the photograph and things ready. And I loved it so much, I uh, kind of had a print done and hung it up on my wall. Um, so again, it spawned off some other ideas and I began to actually look for other landscape images. So, uh, let me show you a few of the, uh, the kind of idea. Let, before I kind of move away from this image, I suppose you might want to see the, um, the path blur that was being applied to this image. So path blur allows us to kind of give these kind of stretch directions. Um, a bit like zoom and panning and everything else with it and things, or a slow shutter speed while you pan uh, will give us the result, or a slow shutter speed while we zoom a lens will give us a zoom effect and things. Um, but this is kind of a, ch a change in the shape. And one of the great things about the path blur is that as soon as we kind of choose the points, which we'll do live now in a minute, but we can also go in and actually bend these as well. So we can actually change the actual direction to the image like we're kind of um, seeing down here in some of the effects and things. Okay, so um, let's just cancel that. We'll shut that image down. And we'll look at um, another image that I was just playing around with ready for this session to kind of see what I would be doing with it. And in a similar way, it kind of gives us great results. Um, it's probably the easiest one to actually tackle because there's no kind of cutting out and replacing concerned um, compared to the other image, which is the uh, Venice image that I kind of uh, just dug out of my archive and kind of just said, oh, okay, let's have a look at that. It's got some good images as far as it's got some nice cloud. It's got some uh, very strong kind of uh, shapes in the background, i.e. the buildings. It's got these very long poles as well. So it's with that in mind that I began to actually work with this uh, kind of image to kind of develop it in this art for art's sake kind of level. All right. So um, let's, which one should we start with? Let's start with the, um, the kind of just the, the, the kind of almost shaping of the uh, wave, which doesn't exist. This is not a wave here. What is it? It's uh, basically our rock formation just at one of the local beaches and things really. So I'm just going to, first of all, delete all of those. And um, like anything, good practice, control J to duplicate it. In this case, I don't want to remove anything. So I'm just going to convert it straight to a smart object. And immediately then I can go in and come up to filter, blur gallery and select on the path blur. With the path blur in mind, it naturally does one few straight away. Okay, so you can kind of change it. You can also go ahead and delete it if it's not what you want it to be. And you can just um, kind of follow these shapes. What I tend to do um, is follow the, um, the kind of the dynamic of the shape of where everything is going. So I just dragged a line across here. I dragged a line now, as you can see, across the sky. And then if I want to change the dynamic, this little point comes in and I can kind of push it down. So I can actually change it quite a lot or a little by changing the ends or the, mid, uh, the middle itself. Doesn't look like a huge drastic change here for a minute. It will when we actually come up onto the bar and we start to move the speed bar. This is where it really starts to kind of push more. And this is where we've got this kind of almost wave effect coming through in that final image. Let's just change this um, landscape background, the hill in the background there. Um, again, as I said, we can move this speed to actually move the actual kind of shape of the path blur. So in other words, you know, when we're doing a camera pan, are we doing it slowly or are we doing it fast? 
Uh, and of course, um, if the shutter speed is slow, we're going to blur the landscape as we go anyway. Right, um, let's just press OK to that. You just press OK up on the top here. And then um, to kind of just add the kind of the final finish to the image in a basic way, I would go into the, fil the filter, the camera raw filter here. And the benefit of having a smart object or smart filter um, is that we can go in and change the effects that we need all the time. So we can actually go in and kind of do things quite dramatically um, to kind of change the look and the feel. So I want to kind of bring all the exposure up or down, do I? You know, two different results straight away there, isn't there? Yeah. Let's bring it exposure up first. Let's make the blacks more gray. So we'll push the blacks up towards the positive. So this kind of gives this lovely kind of stroke effect going through. Um, I agree if you're thinking that the sky is just a little bit kind of bland now. So what happens when we bring the um, white down? Will that affect it? I, I think we need more white, in fact. And if we need to change this sky, probably add in a gradient filter into it. So if you click onto the mask tool, click onto linear gradient, at this point, I can just drag it down and we can start to work the exposure in a way. So if we want a certain color, uh, let's go back in and add in a bit of a blue. Let's push the saturation up just a little bit as well. And just moving down here in the tilt. There we go. There's my blue. Uh, yeah, pretty good with that. Let's click back onto the basic again, and then we'll just go into the effects. And I, I kind of just add that little bit of vignette down, so it's kind of funnel in the eye. I, I, I like it. Okay. Um, again, art is for art's sake, and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And if you like an image that you've done. Don't worry about what others say about it as such. I would say that if we want to make this a little bit more dynamic to go to print for a wall, I would probably crop it down more. And if I am going to crop, but I'm unsure, I would uncheck the box of the deleted crop pixels here at the top. So it means that when I kind of uh, drag it down, I can then, um, if I so wish, and I go, oops, I made a mistake on that mark, um, I can just hit the crop tool again and you can see the, the pixels are there. So I haven't actually cropped, I cropped it away and things. So it's just kind of a visual uh, and it's a good way when I'm saving out the likes of a, a PSD or whatever um, that I'm kind of remembering the last crop that I really liked. Even if I wanted something very specific in size to go for a large print for the wall, perhaps a panoramic or a square, um, but I'm not quite sure if I want it to finally end like that. I still want to have the editing abilities. That crop delete pixel kind of button is well worth kind of unchecking and checking. Depends on kind of which, which uh, you want to end up with. Uh, a deleted pixel image, in other words, the shape has changed forever. Um, or you want to uncheck that box and you can go back in and change your crop at any stage and things really. So I think that's a nice... Um, kind of transition. Let's just allow it to do its job a minute. And if we just press the Alt key and press that little eye on the other one, when you kind of see the original image and then you kind of click it on again, it's completely chalk and cheese here, isn't it? Kind of one for the other. And and for me at this point, the first thing would be to uh, shift control S, uh, Alt S I should say, and that's going to save as, and in this case, it would be um, I don't know, wave in Barry, uh, path blur. And then we just press save. So if I want to, uh, save this out now as a JPEG file, go straight on my website, or go to print, I can just, uh, flatten layers. Yeah. And I go to file, save as, and then I can actually have the option here to go from a JPEG. If I don't want to, um, flatten in case I make the mistake by over saving the PSD. Remember, you can go file and save a copy. And when you do file, save a copy, you then have the option to do all the JPEGs here and things. Um, otherwise, 
if you just do file save as you are going to be limited in your kind of options here tiff ps uh, pdf and psd uh, and P psb which is the large doc document and things um so remember save a copy will allow you to actually have a flattened layer in the likes of a jpeg etc right let's do it with the venice image um because i was quite excited about this when we got going uh, let's just hit the F12 key, which is our revert, of course. That kind of gets rid of all the other information. And um, you didn't see it on the last image, but basically I know that these boats, these big black solid items, are going to really cause uh, some kind of a really deep dark blackness within the image. So if I just go in and I just quickly shape around the boat, yeah, and then I just pick up the likes of the patch tool and let's just make this into uh, more of a wave. Let's do the same here. And, you know, if you're just jumping in on the film now, you're thinking, what the hell is he doing? Um, but really what I'm trying to do is just get rid of, oops, let me just patch it from over here. Um, I'm trying to get rid of the blackness that is going to happen because of all those boats in, sit, in situ as such. If I want to kind of reshape these lines so they're going to follow, then uh, basically if we're just going into the likes of the clone stamp tool, uh, we can kind of select where we're going to uh, clone from and then we can start to actually bring these kind of posts back in again. So the thing to think of is here is don't think like a photographer now. Think about the kind of the shape and what you're trying to affect in the last image. Um, so I'm just kind of um, adding stripes and strokes. I'm even going to copy a piece of this across towards here. Uh, wrong button there. Let me just copy that again. Just bring this in. Okay. So you're thinking I'm absolutely mad at this stage now. Yeah. Um, I forgot to make a duplicate layer. Do so. Let let me do a quick fix. Fix uh, Control A. I'll copy it. Um, then we'll basically hit the F12 key. Then I'll paste on Control V. All automatically creates a new layer anyway. At this stage, let's um, turn this now into a smart ob object. Um, and then we're going to go up into fil filter uh, blur gallery and go and go into our path blur again. So uh, remember, you can just kind of grab something that is already there and change its shape in the kind of the positioning and you can move the path blur in whatever way you want. If you want to get rid of something, remember, just hit the delete button. So let's work on the up first because that's really the, the effect that I'm going for. Um, and let's put in slightly different kind of path blurs. We'll just shape some down here as well so we can start to move a little bit more of the wave. I'll also kind of put it in there as a bit of a shape going across, quite like that. And let's move this up again and just move the strength, I think, of the image up more. So we pretty much can see that we do have the shape within here anyway. And so at this point, what is something we don't like. So I definitely don't like this horizontal. I think because of all the verticals within the image, the more ver vertical we keep it, possibly the better the effect is going to be. Yes, we can go in there and add in a few little kinks within the image. Let's just work on the spire more as well. Drag it down. All right. I'm, I, I like it. You know, I'm not looking for any kind of negativity or comments. I like it. I don't like it. It doesn't really matter. Remember, it's about you being as expressive as you want and perhaps taking an image from kind of a snapshot to something a little bit better. I, I'm, I kind of really encourage you not to just fix things in Photoshop. Let me hit press OK to that minute. Uh, not kind of just fix things in Photoshop, um, but from me showing a technique in Photoshop school to then actually kind of flowing it through and go, I really like this. Is this something that I want to live with, you know? 
Uh, is this something that has a commercial value, perhaps, or whatever? This is really down to you, okay? It's not to do with anybody else at all, unless you're trying to sell it to somebody else and somebody says, I don't like it. Uh, and then you're going to go, well, okay, perhaps look at this one instead then. Um, but we can't please everybody all of the time. Remember that. The key thing is to always please yourself before everybody else. Right. The other thing that we did, of course, was go into filter, camera raw, And now we just went into the basic technique with it. I am going to add the um, effects first. I'm just going to add the vignetting in. Um, gives a little bit more of a painterly kind of uh, effect. In the basics then, I'm going to look at the contrast higher in the upper touch. In the blacks, I'm going to open those blacks up because I don't want something that is deep, deep black. I want more information. I can also do it with the actual greys. Starts to actually show up all this kind of texturing that's naturally going on. And if I was like to print uh, print this onto the likes of a Hannah Moola, uh rag or a watercolour paper and everything else, it's going to take on a slightly different dimension as well with it. Um, high, are the highlights then, do I want them more or less? I think more would be good. Again, art for art's sake, it's what I want. You might say, no, I don't like it. I like it in the other way. Your choice. Uh, and just go from there. And let's just go in and basically put in a linear gradient. Um, D, 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 D. Let me just uh, go back out again. Go back in and hit the raid linear gradient there. It remembered the settings from the last gradient that I applied. So just to show uh, to show you down here is the reset the sliders automatically. I've put that in. So each time I was going to come in, it's going to reset it to a different kind of look. So let's kind of just drag something down here. And as far as the saturation is concerned, well, we don't want kind of any of that at all. Let's pull the exposure down a little bit. And perhaps let's put a, another linear gradient in as well. He says, and we'll just put it in from the base here. Once more, just bring that exposure down a little bit, but I will push up the um, shadows more just to open up the grays a little bit and the contrast slightly up higher. Pressing OK to that. I'm happy with that. Yeah, I like it. If we went back to the basics, and we went, okay, is there anything else to do? I, don't, I definitely don't want to sharp, sharpen this. I could actually take the clarity down and completely give it like a um, a bit of a Monet Manet kind of impressionistic kind of um, finish with it without even going into a uh, an extra brush fill, filter, whatever it is. So the texture, the clarity, remember, is mid-tone, um, whereas the texture we, use to, we usually use on skins um, or finely detailed um, kind of to control it, like the detail on a jacket. If we wanted more detail on the jacket, we push the texture up and so on with it. Um, but again, you can play around with these filters to kind of give you a mix of uh, whatever. And if I just press OK to that, um, the real thing that's annoying me, in fact, is that the, um, the landscape isn't quite horizontal. Um, so remember, I've unchecked that delete crop pixels there. Um, so that's going to kind of come into it. And we just gave that little bit of a finish to it. And that's my kind of attempt on three different images to go. Photography is the start at uh, the starting point. I want to add a little bit more creativity into my photography. Hope you enjoyed it. See you on the next film. Bye. -bye.